Kaz Riley and this is the Hypnosis 247 Live Network and trancing in the sheets with me today I have the marvellous Dr. Kate Bevan-Marks. But before I go over to Kate and tell you a bit more about Kate, just to let you know when you signed up for the network you were sent a link which gives you $200, I think it's $200, travel card that you can activate and um and also if you put the word solutions into the box below then we'll send you some information about how you can use tra travel cards and travel incentives to enhance your business and to create client leads so what more could you ask for wow so i'm very very pleased to have dr kate bevan marks here with me today she is um a amazing hypnotist um she is also an amazing lady she's on the board for the BSCH is the chair, in fact, and also on the hypnotherapy board for the CMHC. She's the author of the amazing book, How to Communicate Effectively, and I'm very, very happy to have her here today. So uh, thank, you for thank you for coming on the show, Kate. It's lovely to have you. Thanks, guys. It's lovely to be here. There we go. What a lovely intro. Oh, well, you know, I have to speak the truth as ever. It's just great to be able to actually, one of the great things about doing these interviews is to actually be able to tell people what you think about them. And it's recorded, oh. so you can't deny it, which I think is wonderful. So we're going to have a chat today about how to choose the right hypnotist for you, because obviously there are many hypnotists out there and everybody needs something different. So what, what do you think is the most important things when, when somebody's looking to kind of choose a hypnotist for them? I think the very first thing to do is to, rather than be hasty and just pick anybody, and you may be lucky, you may not, is to actually spend a bit of time working out your ideal hypnotist. And even before then, work out what you want to work on. And if you give that some thought, you're not going to go off half prepared. If you think, well, I specifically want to see a male therapist or a female therapist, or I want to work on this particular issue, then when you go looking for a therapist, you're going to be better informed. You're going to make better choices. I think that's, that's the key thing to start with is start from a position of knowledge. And by doing that, oh, that looks very interesting, having you just perched there. <laughs> it's like an arrow to your head. <laughs> and I think by, by doing that, you're more likely to get started in the right direction. But then I think it comes down to, instead of just leaping to the first person you find that meets your criteria, almost interview them. So have a look at their qualifications, check them out thoroughly, because sadly anybody in the UK particularly can say they're a hypnotherapist without even having read a book. Scary. It is, isn't it? You know, I know that's certainly something, you know, even when people come in and kind of ask me questions, I, I tell people, go and, go and talk to several of us and, and find the one that you feel is the best fit. And it is... You know, and I said, go and make sure they're insured, they're qualified, you know, experience they've got. So definitely. Absolutely. And by checking them out, you can check out with their professional association that they're actually registered. You can see when they qualified, if they've been doing any continuing professional development. And maybe get down to a short list of two or three. And then I suggest giving them a call. Email ahead, say, I'd like to have a quick chat with you and just see if there's any sort of connection there. It may well be that you resonate more with one person than with another because good therapy, I think, is an investment, not just financially, but it's an investment in your time and your personal, maybe even professional development. So making it the right investment deserves a bit of preparation. 
Absolutely. Well, it's like we would, you know, when you think about essentially, if we were doing any anything else, we would we would research that, wouldn't we? We would get those, you know, those kind of recommendations. And I think asking around as well is a good way to, you know, I think the internet can be very misleading when we're kind of people are choosing because there's a lot of stuff out there. Whereas if you, you know, if you've got people that you know, I know certainly. I do, and I'm very certain that you do get most referrals through word of mouth from clients that we've already worked with. And it's a powerful tool that, isn't it? So if I was saying to somebody, what would you do? I would I'd say, ask around and see who your friends have seen or your colleagues have seen and what they thought of them, because that's much more valid than um, any kind of uh, video testimonial or anything like that, which I'm, I'm always a bit like that with video testimonials anyway. <laughs> <laughs> T testimonials are a, a tricky area because more and more people expect testimonials mm -hmm. and expect reviews some people value their privacy so they may have had the most amazing therapy experience but they don't want to share it mm. or they don't want to open themselves up to people saying, well what was wrong with you then well, this is it, isn't it? This is it, especially in an area, in a niche area like mine. So that's, that's why I have the policy of no video testimonials and everything else I can anonymize. So, so what, what else, what else would you recommend people do when they're, 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 they're in the process of choosing a hypnotist? So say they've got down to that two or three and they're kind of seeing who resonates. What, what, what do they do then? Do they just book in or do, is there something else that they should do? I think the next thing then is to actually really think about their issue and hopefully they will have already done their research to check out that actually hypnotherapy is the right therapy for them, that they're not looking for something more talking therapy like counselling or cognitive behaviour therapy or even that they're not really thinking more about massage. Now, if they're mm -hmm. tense, it might be that a massage is more appropriate for them or osteopathy or something else. So assuming that they've made the decision that hypnotherapy is right for them, I think the next thing then is to actually sit down and prepare and really work out what it is that they want to work on. Mm -hmm. Think about what they've tried in the past. Mm -hmm. Think about what they would like to be different. And then you, with your sort of short list of two or three, check out whether those, how they would work with that. And although most hypnotherapists aren't going to give you a half an hour blow by blow account, they're likely to give you an indication of perhaps whether they're more bit behavioral and they like telling you what to do, or they might be more humanistic in which they expect you to be a collaborative partner and getting the right mix of therapist and client can make successful therapy that much easier. Mm. And it may, it may just be that, you know, the, 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 the therapist says, I do a lot, all of those things. It just depends on, on what I think is best for you. And after consultation, you know, I'll be able to tell you what, what mm. those things are, which is a, a valid reason or a valid answer, I think as well, you know, it's that tailor made kind of, Therapy. I think that's what I want to know that it was it was tailored just for me. That's what I want. Oh, get. absolutely, yes. Um, scripts are fabulous in their place. They're a wonderful learning tool. Great way of understanding how language works. But they're written for somebody that that doesn't necessarily actually exist. So mm. a therapist who's experienced enough to be able to create a bespoke therapy session is essential and it might be that if you've got something that's going to take a while to work through or you want it to take a while to work through you might go and have a consultation with two hypnotherapists and just see how that session goes for you before you invest in maybe six or seven other sessions mm. not everybody will will want therapy to happen in one session nor can it in one session it really does depend on the individual and what they're working on and the speed at which they can change. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in terms of once they've kind of done that, they've, they've chosen that the, the therapist for them, how do then, what would you suggest they do to get the most out of therapy? I think the first thing is to turn up prepared to work. And 
in that, I mean, that you've, you've thought about what you want to talk about. I mm -hmm. had a client the other week and I, he came in and I said, well, how would you like things to be different? Well, I don't know. And, and it took maybe 10, 15 minutes to actually get to a point where he could have got there himself. Mm. And he would have got more out of that therapy session if he'd done so. So being prepared to work, being prepared to be open and honest. Mm. This isn't a case of you're going to be judged by the therapist. If you're not honest and you're not open, then they're not going to be able to do their best for you. And that's, that's really, really important. And also getting the timing right. If you've got a lot of stuff going on at the moment, is it the right time? to be really giving all of your focus to your personal change. Mm. So it might be if you've got you know, some major events coming up, delay therapy until after those so that you can really give the therapy process more attention, more work. I think they're really, really important things. Another thing that's really important I find for my clients is homework. It's understanding that the therapy session isn't really just like a massage where you go in, they give you a quick sort of massage and it feels wonderful. And then you go away and you resume your normal life. Mm. A lot of hypnotherapists will give clients homework, tasks, activities. And not only to discuss that with the hypnotherapist, but be realistic about what you can achieve. So that they know what you're going to do. You agree and commit to doing what you can do. And that then will help inform the therapy process that much more effectively. I think that's, I think that's so true. You know, the way, the way I've often described that to my clients, you know, is kind of like, you know, I reframe the word homework and say, you know, I said, this is the best thing, the best homework you'll have ever been given in your life. <laughs> but also, um, yeah, I think it's that thing of, um, you know, I, I kind of say to them, look, you know, if you were going to see a physical therapist or a physiotherapist, and they gave you a set of exercises and you didn't do any of the exercises. When you go back and see them the next time, the, th the physical therapist would know. They would know that you haven't done your homework. And believe me, I will know. <laughs> <laughs> so just do it. <laughs> and also, you know, if you don't do it, I would say it's a bit like, you know, if you go to the doctor and they give you a series of tablets and you take one and then you don't take the other six, then you know what you wouldn't expect the tablets to work so this is the similar kind of thing if you only do your homework once during the week then you know it, the, you're going to get that that little tiny effect rather than the the kind of the cumulative effect of of doing it seven times during that week if it's a particular thing that they've been asked to do and also I think it puts a bit of onus on them and it's how we set people up with tools so by the time they've left us they're good at self-hypnosis they're good at reframing things they're good at catching themselves when they're getting into a negative loop because they practiced it and therefore if we practice something it's there when we need it in the future isn't it so they've got that toolbox whereas you know i always say to my clients as well imagine that you're just about to learn to ride a bike and you need to ride a bike in an emergency you know, you can't do it. Whereas if you're, you can just pick up the bike and ride on the bike during an emergency, then it's a much easier thing to do, isn't it? Than try and do all that at once. And they kind of go, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant analogy. I love that one. So what about, you know, people that enter therapy for somebody else? Does that, is that something that, you know, I th I'm a big believer in they have to do it for themselves. And yeah. that has an, a, a massive implication on how effective outcomes will be. Do you find the same thing? Oh, totally, totally. And I'll, I'll give you a brief example if we've, if we've got time. I had a chap turn up, lovely, mature chap turn up for therapy and paper under the arm came into the room and sort of said, oh, you're the woman that's going to make me stop smoking, are you? Okay. Um, do you want to? And he's like, no. I said, I'm curious, why are you here? He said, well, the missus made me come. And she's sitting downstairs. Went, okay. So I basically said to him, well, we've got a few choices. You can either sit here, you can either go back down straight away. I won't charge you for the session. He says, well, she's already paid. Went, okay. <laughs> um, I don't think he dared go downstairs at that point. So you could sit here and read your paper. We could talk about 
world affairs or weather um, or maybe there's something else you'd like to work on and he he said well I've heard that hypnosis is good for golf okay yeah it can help and we did a bit of work long story short we did a bit of work on improving his golf game and he went away quite happy and he phoned me up a few weeks later and uh, he said oh he said everybody at the golf club has been asking me about my my secret weapon because I've suddenly improved so much with my golf excellent well done great work so um, that stopped smoking lark yeah he said does it really work yeah if you want it to so, can I book in he actually had wanted to stop smoking he just didn't want his wife to be the one that pushed him into it yeah and, and it's it's, he it's and he stopped that's it I think that's it isn't it is that you know, I often, you know, when people phone you up and say, can you stop my, my husband smoking or can you make, you know, my daughter do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I, I always said to people, look, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So my advice is show them where the water is and then leave them to it. And then they will take the water when they're ready to. But the more you push, the more they're going to kind of resist. So, you know, by all means, plant the seed, but then you just need to kind of let it grow. And, uh, and that's really the key to it, isn't it? I think if you're, if you're wanting to influence a family member into, into doing something that's positive for them, is to, you know, is to kind of introduce the idea and then allow it to grow so much that they think it's theirs. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's human nature, isn't it? To the more, you know, even if you really want to do something, the more somebody tells you you have to, the less likely we are. I think that's just part of being human, isn't it? Or maybe that's just part of being stubborn like me. I'm not sure, but. Persistent. Yeah. Persistent, yeah. Resistant, persistent. Um, <laughs> what's the word? Uh, independent. That's a good mm. word, isn't it? Yeah, we'll go with that. We're just very independent. <laughs> So tell me, Kate, where, where are people looking to find you, find out about your training? You do lots of really amazing training courses, EMDR, um, and not to mention a lot of other different ones as well. Um, where, where can they find you? Where can they find out about where to train, how to train, or to get in touch with you if they're looking for therapy with you? Give us all your details. <laughs> Okay, well my, my training website is HypnoTC, so that's easy, it's HypnoTC.com mm -hmm. and that gives details of all the in-person training that, that I do with my business partner Rory Zed. and if people want to find out more about my corporate stuff, my communication stuff or for hypnotherapy, that's quite an easy one as well, it's simply DrKateHypno.com and they can find me on either of those. Although these days, if I spell my surname right, they'll find me on Google quite easily. There we go. That's it. Just good. That's great, isn't it? When we get to the point where we can just be Googled. <laughs> um, okay. So that that's um, so. Thank you so much for um, coming on and speaking with us today. What what would be your kind of key take homes then? So if we had to summarise how to find the best hypnotist for you, what would be your kind of your do this, do this, do this, your little bullet points to help people? Think about what you want, be selective, and go prepared to work. If you put the work in, you really will get the most out of the therapy. And we love motivated clients, don't we, oh. as therapists? They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of the dream people to work with, aren't they? And they get the best results. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I hope I'll, I'll have you back on again at some point in the future. Um, this is the um, Hypnosis 24-7 Live Network. Um, this is Transit in the Sheets, and we'll see you again next time. Get ready.